outside this world. Having no concern for an afterlife or being able to buy off any consequence by appropriate sacrifices to appropriate idols, the wealthy and strong could do whatever they wanted without a second thought. So here we have our beloved Muhammad, a family man, married, somewhat successful, seeking something. He goes on a retreat, and he has a mind-blowing experience, which changes everything. He is able to convince his wife that he is not crazy, and then a few friends and family. He talks to people and slowly gets a few more people that will listen to what he has to say. The rich and the powerful leave him alone because he's no threat. There are Christians and Jews around and people who have other religious and magical ideas. So it's no big deal. So what happens? Gradually more people are impressed, not only by the message of the prophet, but by the prophet himself and the community. People, these Arabs, who are known for doing whatever they feel like, are now restraining themselves. And they're following the leadership of this relatively young guy. He was only in his 40s. He is an Arab, but he's able to talk to the Christians and the Jews who have been exposed to the Byzantine and Persian empires. He's able to talk to them about the one God and the concept of the hereafter. He's not afraid to speak out against the backward customs of his people, even when confronted with threats or bribes. Members of the community see it's a good thing in bringing their relatives and friends into the community. The Believers Movement begins to grow. The movement grew with Arabs who used to be ignorant and worshipped idols. Christians and Jews also joined the movement because they saw that these were people of integrity. They get dedicated to living in a manner. Designed to please the one God, the same God they knew and worshiped. Most successful people of the, in this area at that time were traders and merchants, moving and selling goods from far and wide. Commerce, then as now, requires some degree of trust and certainty to be efficient. More money can be made by a volume of honest trading then a quick rip-off of robbery. The statement of belief of the movement was la la ilaha, something everyone could agree on. There is no God but God. Everyone except the non-believers, the idol worshippers, and the hypocrites. Those who say they believe, but they really did not. Indeed, we have to be careful that we don't invert, inadvertently slip back into becoming idol worshippers ourselves. Rather than respect the prophet as an ordinary man who lived in the exact middle of nowhere and ended up changing the entire history of the world, some of us want to give him superpowers and attribute all manner of extra human attributes to him. On the other hand, some of us Muslims and probably some of us right here feel like we need to protect the prophet that if somebody criticizes him or his teaching, we start losing our minds. Now maybe we don't have any of the people like the ones in Denmark that went after the cartoonists, but I bet some folks here get a little mad about it. Many of us treat the Quran like it's a magical book. The book is just a book. Words printed by a machine on paper. The meaning of the words is the message from God. Think about that for a minute. I wasn't around back then, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is the reason they didn't write the Quran down while the prophet was alive. He saw how people did with the Torah and the Bible. They made it into an object of veneration and nobody got to read it. The message got lost. We have some folks who have taken things way off the track, and we have to work on them and pray that they will someday understand that in their zeal to emulate the Prophet Muhammad, they forgot the most essential element. He was a human being. He was a husband and a father. 
He was a neighbor and a friend of people from different tribes and creeds. He was probably a nice guy. What does all this have to do with us in 2012? We are part of the same movement. Even though our movement is over a thousand years old and has billions of members separated by hundreds of thousands of square miles, we can all find some way we can contribute. We just need to take it down to human scale. Each one of us can make our own contribution in a group or by ourselves to make some impact. It doesn't have to take a lot of effort or money. It can also have incidental benefits with some backups that come back to us in a material way. For example, researchers recently found that most people who are unemployed, that are successful in getting new employment, do so through so-called loose associations, essentially a friend of a friend. These are people who are not well known to you personally, but have an association through some social or activity circle that allow you to feel comfortable in acting positively on the recommendation of another member of that circle. Somebody needs a job? Who better to recommend if you hear of an opening than a fellow believer? Someone you know has, a, has the same system of values and beliefs that you have. Cost to you? Nothing. Time taken? Negligible. Impact, you might change your life. Here's another example. Project needs funding. How to raise the money? Get a job. Every day when you come home, take the coins out of your pocket. Throw them in the jar. Get your friends to do the same. After several months, you'll find you have quite a bit of money. Cost of you, negligible. Degree of difficulty, very low. Our MPV community, specifically, is different in that we have an even broader ethical outlook than the Muslim majority currently professes. We dare say that we are not smarter or stronger than God. We do not dare to judge a person unfit to worship Allah because Allah created them with a different sexual orientation. We do not believe that Allah is so enfeebled that he needs protection from the voice of a woman or the sight of her uncovered hair. We are also strong enough to know that there are a lot of people who are superstitious and frightened and need help to ease their way into another way of thinking about Allah and this movement we call Islam. Who is with us? Anyone who believes in the one God and believes there is an afterlife. to which we are admitted based on God's judgment. Unfortunately, this probably leaves out many people who profess to be Jews, Christians, and pious Muslims. We have taken on an extra charge to leave judgment to Allah and open the door to those willing to walk through it. This is in accord with the original believers movement. Rather than division, we seek unity. We do not judge the sincerity of others' belief based on tired, ancient arguments or doctrine. We accept or choose to reject others based on their actual behavior. Instead of attacking our enemies, we choose to recommit ourselves to do more good and make our version of the movement more attractive. We have a duty to make a home for those who are seeking a lot but find the doors closed to them elsewhere. We are the brothers and sisters of all who believe in the one God, Layla Ilala. Anything after that is variation open for discussion. At this time of year, Ramadan, we get a chance to show what we are about. People who are unfamiliar with Muslims are often surprised when they hear that we fast for an entire month, not eating or drinking, especially during a summer like this. Sounds crazy, actually. This is an opportunity to explain that the point is not to induce suffering.